Cascador 2024 that 2 just dropped and I know you've probably already seen the flashy highlights but I wanted to take a deeper look at the new features, what really works, where does it fall short and what new creative doors this update could open. For me the standout feature is the new blend shape support which already in this early state could be used for facial mocap. But we'll get into that shortly. Let's start with the unbaking for non-humanoid characters. So Cascador has taken the unbaking feature to the next level. Previously it was only for humanoid characters, but now it works for any kind of creature. I started simple, testing a basic horse walk animation. The first step was checking if the fulcrum points are recognized correctly. Thankfully Cascador added a handy new button for this, so we don't need to touch auto physics for this anymore. But even though the hooves are recognized perfectly, by default I kept running into this error when I tried to execute unbaking. Turns out I need to manually add fulcrum groups to the rig when multiple points like the hooves contact the ground simultaneously. After figuring that out with some help from the Cascader team, it was a quick fix and unbaking worked like a charm. It still shows an error about the auto posing controller. This would be the third step in the unbaking process, but since creatures don't have auto posing controllers, they cannot be unlocked. Okay, so now that I know that it works, I wanted to try out on something more complex like this dragon rig from Sketchfab. It comes with multiple animations, but I was especially curious to see how Unbaking handles the flying animation, which has zero fulcrum points. After a little cleanup in Blender, I could import to Cascader and rig it with a really basic rig setup, but I made sure to properly assign the fulcrum groups this time. And once the rigging was done, I could import the animation from Blender. By the way, this animation import is a new feature of the Cascader bridge addon that I will release soon because it seems to work reliably. And to my surprise, unbaking worked flawlessly even on the flying animation. I have no idea what kind of black magic cascader does here. Uh, of course we lost some of the finer details in the wings flapping, but that was expected and honestly the results are really impressive. One of the most exciting updates is how Cascader now handles character interactions. Now, if your characters are set up properly, Cascader automatically recognizes contact points between them. It does this by using the fulcrum radius of the point controllers and the collision objects, which are now automatically added when creating your rig. At the moment you still need to set the collision size for each rig element manually, but I found that if you set the rigid body sizes first and then re-add the collision objects, they will automatically adjust to the correct size more or less. In Cascader's showcase they demonstrated this feature with hand-to-hand -hand combat animations, which is a bit beyond my current animation skills, but I was curious to see if this feature worked with any type of rig, not just humanoids. So using the walk cycle from earlier, I added Kaski to this scene and positioned it roughly where it would sit on the horse. I then copied the horseback's movement to Kaski, so they would, they would move together and luckily it worked perfectly with the default settings. But in some cases you might need to tweak the fulcrum radius or the collision body sizes. For instance, it occasionally thought that the horse legs were contact points, which I didn't want to, so I lowered the radius for these points for the whole interval. And I've seen a really creative use of this feature already on Vice's YouTube channel, where a rigged spear was used as the contact point lifting a second character up in the air. Next up is a feature called separation of motion. In theory this should add more separation between the parts of the body during flips and 
different twists, introducing some overlapping actions so your animation feel less stiff and robotic. I tried to create a similar twist animation as it is in the demo, adding some anticipation, but with the default settings of 90%, the separation of motion completely over rotated the upper body. I found that dialing it down around 50% or even lower produced a more natural result, but you can also fine tune the effect by adjusting the muscle stiffness for each point controller. So that affects how much it influences different body parts. Honestly, my first impression is that if you've done your blocking well, it might be better to keep this feature turned off. I think I would only recommend using it if you are working with a rough block out and want to add some life quickly to your character. But that's just my take. I might be missing something here, so I am curious to hear your thoughts. Now, this is the feature I've been waiting for, the blend shape support. The feature itself might seem pretty straightforward, but trust me, it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. This is super useful for achieving more natural deformations, especially in tricky areas like the hips, shoulders, where the joints alone don't cut it. Normally, these blend shapes are controlled with drivers, and you could technically automate them in Cascader if you are comfortable with the node editor and vector math, but that's not me. But here's where things get really interesting. You can control blend shapes with Python, and that's more my cup of tea. And this opens up the possibility to use existing facial mocap solutions with the common 52 ARKit facial blend shapes. So I grabbed this face model from Sketchfab, complete with a whole set of facial expression shape keys, and when importing, you just need to make sure to check the blend shape option. If your file contains animated shape keys, you will need to import it using the scene preset. And now you could manually adjust the sliders for each expression, but we don't want to do that. So after some quick research, I found a couple of solutions that can either stream live the blend shape data or convert a video into a list of blend shapes for each frame. This method gave me the most accurate results, although it's quite hard to set up and use it, but it works and it's so much fun to play with. If you are interested in how this can be done, let me know and I'd be happy to dive deeper into this topic and find a usable solution. But just a heads up, there will be probably some Python coding involved. And to be honest, I was way too distracted with facial mocap to dive into everything, but there are plenty of new other features worth exploring. Pendulum swing support looks really promising and there is already an excellent official tutorial about it you should definitely check that out. And just really quickly run through some of the smaller but really important features. Better performance when working with longer animations. Cascader can now use up to 256 gigabytes of RAM if configured in the settings. You can now set float values for the frame rate if you want to make your life unnecessarily complicated. Three new characters were added for using Move AI, Xsenses or Rococo's mocap feature. Easier handling of link scenes with more customization options, improved auto posing especially for ground poses. Some tools have been removed from the toolbar like adding texture is now available from the view menu, but you can still use drag and drop. The ballistic curve is also hidden by default but can be enabled in the settings and you can customize here which tools you want to make visible. A bunch of new scripts are now available under the comments menu like the new mesh collider option. As always, the Cascader team has done a fantastic job with this new version, although I got to admit that auto physics seems to be getting more and more complex, but at least there are more possibilities. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments what features you are most excited to try out.